Like probably some of you know, the Beta Flight 4.3 is finally happening. At least this is the latest rumor and uh, if everything will go well in the next month or two, we should get the official release of the Beta Flight 4.3. Yes, it's possible to use the Beta Flight 4.3 even right now using the nightly builds, but having something that was tested and went to the correct process of the release candidate is usually a good idea because, because it gives you some confidence that it's working just like expected. Because the release cycle of the Beta Flight 4.3 took more or less one and a half years, there is a lot of changes, a lot of improvements for the Beta Flight project, and we might expect kinda, yeah, one of the biggest releases so far. I would like to talk briefly about some of the new stuff that the Beta Flight developers are adding to the Beta Flight 4.3 because I personally think that they are interesting. And believe it or not, but the list is actually pretty short. First of all, there are new types of the filters. Previously, Beta Flight was using the PT1 and the Big Watt filter, and this was usually covering everything you really needed. Uh, if you wanted heavier filtering that you were using Big Watt, if you if your build was kind of smoother and less noisy, then you were able to fully use the PT1. However, the problem with the Big Watt is that it's not always behaving like it should be. So the Beta Flight developers introduced the PT2 and the PT2 3, PT3 filters, which are PT1s in the cascade. Uh, so the PT2 is more or less the equivalent of the Big Watt and uh, comparing to the Big Watt it offers a nicer transition and solves some of the problems of the Big Watt itself. We will not go into those details because this is too technical. However, um, this is something interesting if you are right now using Big Watt filtering. And uh, if you think that your Quiet might fly better, there is right now the option to keep more or less the same level of the filtering but have a smaller phase delay by only switching to the PT2 on the gyro and the D-term filtering. Probably the best improvement of the Beta Flight 4.3 are the new dynamic notch filters. Um, dynamic notch filters are with Beta Flight for years and basically it's based on the analysis of the incoming gyro signal. There is an FFT fast Fourier transformation of the gyro signal that allows us to check which frequency bands are the most visible in the signal. And uh, rule of a thumb is if something is above 100 Hz, then most probably it's only a noise, it's a junk and should be filtered out. So the Beta Flight was and is and will be uh, applying the notch filters on those frequencies detected by the FFT analysis of the gyro signal. However, up to the Beta Flight 4.2 including, there was only a one notch per axis. So it was finding the most distinctive frequency and trying to attenuate this frequency with the targeted notch filter. With the Beta Flight 4.3, Beta Flight is able to track up to five notches, up to five peaks, up to five frequencies in the gyro signal. By default, it's three and attenuate them separately. This means that now the dynamic notches have much more chance of successfully fighting with the vibration because it can attenuate not only the main motor frequency, it also can fight with uh, any of the resonance frequencies, but also has enough of the room to also try to attack the harmonic frequency of any of those. And as a result, I tested, yes, it definitely flies much, 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 much better because it's just able to attenuate with those notches much more of the peaks in the noise gathered by the gyro sensor on board. Gyro RPM notches stays and more than that they are improved because now there will be something called the Big Watt Crossfit that greatly improves the behavior of those notches when the motor frequency goes close to the mean frequency. Because in the Beta Flight 4.2 and before when the motor frequency from the ESCs and the 
um, RPM filter was closing to the minimum frequency that it was allowed to work on, there was some ringing because this is how the big quad notch was behaving. With the Betaflight 4.3, there is right now something cross the, called the CrossFit and the attenuation and how the notch is working changes when it closes to the minimum frequency eliminating this ringing next betaflight finally solved probably one of the most irritating user interface problem as the rates because right now the actual rates are the default rates for the beta flight that means that it's greatly simplified and when you set it the rates to 800 de degrees per second that means it is really 800 degrees per second and finally 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 i have no idea why beta flight waited so long to make the actual rates the default rates for the whole system on top of that, there were a lot of changes and improvements for the whole fit forward uh, infrastructure of how fit forward the reaction of the PID control that is happening when you quickly move your sticks, especially on the roll and the yaw, uh, including many changes. I will definitely not go through all of them because the topic is too big. However, we might even say that the fit forward behavior and the implementation for the 4.3 is basically written from scratch and as a result behaves much better than before. And something like a novelty, Betaflight 4.3 comes with the support for the STM 32 G4 flight controllers. I'm not aware if there are any G4 flight controllers on the market yet. However, this is happening. Uh, what is G4? G4 is, let's say, something... It's probably closer to the F411 than F7 because it's smaller, cheaper and mm, less powerful and also less costly than the F7s and also F405s, however, more than the 411s. So as the option, there will be more flight controllers in the future. Um, and this is a huge deal because of the crisis on the, on the chip uh, market. Because right now you almost cannot buy chips and having the option to put something that maybe, maybe is on the market is the huge help for the manufacturers. And at the end, we will know how good the G4s uh, are working and are they worthy when we will finally have the G4s in our hands. No idea when that will happen. The final two changes for the Betaflight 4.3 are something of the user experience and the tuning experience. The first of them is the ability of the Betaflight to remap motor order and change the motor direction from the graphical user interface. You will, with the 4.3, no longer have to go to the CLI and tap, type some commands hoping to remap motors. You will be able to use the wizard in the Betaflight configurator to change the order and change the direction of each motor without having to go to the BL Heli configurator. Why? Because right now Betaflight will be able to send the reverse motor direction command over the D-shot and thus drive the direction of the rotation of the motors. No problems. And finally, the presets. Betaflight 4.3 comes with the presets. Presets are the community official or not official list of settings that can be applied by the users because someone decided that this set of settings has some advantage. So we will be have, able to have the default tune, the karate tune, the preset for the cine lifters, preset for the sine whoops and so on and so on and so on. As the result, if you are not really that much into the tuning the quad yourself, you will be able just to find the preset in the list, filter this by the keywords, apply, and hopefully your quad will fly much better than before. Big.